the Gumby and Davy Goliath thing, that was a, a television show. And then after Gumby, Dave, and Goliath, I got the job at uh, Gene Warren's Excelsior in Hollywood uh, as an animator. And, um, <clears throat> uh, well, yeah, I think the first thing that I did there was a commercial. It was a uh, McDonald's commercial with dancing French fries and hamburger patties and, and soda cups. And, uh, and then shortly after that, you know, we did the uh, first movie for me that I worked on, which was you know, Legend Hillbilly John with the Ugly Bird. And, uh, and then you know, we did Land of the Lost, and we did commercials and TV specials. So it was kind of like a mixture of all those different things at the same time. You know, it really wasn't just you know, going through like commercials and then progressing to features. So it was all happening at the same time, different things. No, and we did have a disaster once, I think, with um, a Land of the Lost with Torchy when we were just uh, got the model made and then we were like experimenting with um, you know, the front flame breathing device, which was uh, basically you know, a tube ran from his mouth and through his body and out the bottom of his belly. And then we, we used, um, I think it was WD 40, and we just squirted WD 40 through this tube and lit it and then we went to live action mode you know and you know, like the first time that we did this that um his whole face like sort of caught on fire because the 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 um the liquid and stuff somehow you know sprayed all inside of his mouth you know and not straight out like it was supposed to you know and just everything got wet and just caught on fire so that was uh kind of a weird thing but then we fixed it and got it to work right of course Dennis calls me up when I was at Excelsior it was like 1976 he said hey Harry you want to come work on this uh, uh, movie called Star Wars and this at the time this is where ILM started in Van Nuys out in the valley and uh, he said you know it might only be about two or three months work then then you might be finished and that's it you know and I said why well, and I said well Dennis you know I'm not gonna leave my job at Excelsior that I've been at for like six years to go work on some science fiction movie that I never heard about. I never heard, I don't know who the director is, you know, and, and, and then I'll be out of work in three months. So I said no. <laughs> and then the, um, and of course I would, you think I would have known better on Empire because of course I knew what, what was going on by then, but Empire I had to turn that down because um, Bill Stromberg and I just started a studio in um, San Clemente, which is crazy. So we had that going, plus our first daughter was just, uh, was just born, and, and, and um, Charles Schneer was interviewing me about working on Clash of the Titans, you know, with Ray. And so I had all this stuff going on, so, I had, so that's when I turned it down at that time, too, you know. So um, they uh, chose Stephen Archer. Yeah, yeah, got Stephen. Yeah, I should have... Um, I should have like lowered my price or something. <laughs> you know, I should have done it for free just to work with Ray on his last movie. When you're doing stop motion animation and it's hands on, it's like um, it's more. Uh, what's the word? It's more uh, improv improvisation, sort of. I mean, you, you plan out the shot too, and you think about it, and you think of the performance, and you visualize it, and you do it. And sometimes you have, you, most times you do have very specific things to do. But along the way of going from A to B, you know, anything can happen. And sometimes, you know, because the human's not very perfect, you know, it's just like all these sometimes little happy accents, little things happen, you know, between, you know, frame 10 and frame 20 that just make it special, make it different that you don't get when you're doing CG because CG, you just tend to make it perfect from A to B or frame 10 to 20 to make you tend to make all that movement perfect, you know, and uh, and it, and that that's to me that's kind of the difference, you know, little imperfections versus being so perfect, you know, it's to me it's got a little more of a charm and a nice quality, you know, the stop motion way, you know, for so you know, does I love low budget films, um, <clears throat> just usually for the simple fact that um, because it's low budget, usually. You know, you get to do more things because you you don't, as opposed to like at ILM, usually, 
you, uh, at a big place like that, it's usually uh, you just do like one thing, you know, you're either animating or you're a cameraman or you're an optical compositor or whatever. Everything's more separated uh, and compartmentalized. And uh, so in low-budget stuff, because of the nature of not having the money, you know, you, you they rely on you doing several things at once, and that's usually what you do. You know, you, you can... You're animating, you're building the creature, you're making the model miniature, you're you know going out and shooting the plates, doing the composites, and you, you kind of almost do everything on a low budget thing, and and uh, and it's kind of a smaller crew, and um, and you have to be uh, much more creative to figure out how to do stuff on a smaller budget and have it look you know like it's a um, several million dollar budget or shot, you know, so. Uh, that's um, I love that um, that kind of a challenge with low budget movies, and I like the high budget movies are great too. You know, I mean, you get paid more, <laughs> um, um, and uh, they're usually they're a higher profile movie. You know, and and um, uh, but uh, yeah, I would probably um, overall maybe kind of. Tend to tend to favor the lower budget, medium budget movies. Just just usually have more fun on something like that, you know. There was actually more miniature stuff that I was involved in. I had forgotten about. I didn't really build. I mean, I worked on some miniature sets. I didn't really build like models or ships or anything myself. But I worked on a lot of like terrains, miniature terrains, forced perspective shots, hanging miniature shots, mini miniature shots and stuff. Working on at my father's place in the 70s, Land of the Lost, and it was the third year, so 74, 75, it was, so it was 76. And we're, we added a set to the, to the um, Marsh set for this two-headed sea monster that's a new character for the third year, Lulu. And when that Lulu comes out of the water, it's a hand puppet thing, and then it's stop motion. But the hand puppet thing, is is a hand puppet, but it has to come up out of the water. So I built this little tank this deep, and in front of the set, tied it into the so you get the whole marsh behind it, and have sealed in a rubber kitchen glove that goes to about here, and it's all sealed in. Okay, so that we can put your hand up inside that and hold and and puppet this, this character up and shoot that part high speed and then you go to stop motion for the Lulu stuff. So I'm filling the set up, this is the first time, and it's almost up the water and I'm turning to look at something and I, and I, and I turn back around and it's almost empty. It's like, it's leaking, what? I, and then it dawns on me, oh my God. I turn around and look under and that glove has gone on revert. The glove's about this big. It looks like a cow udder. It's about this big growing. And it's like, oh, pull the plugs on the pop. Boom, it goes off. And it just flooded the whole stage. It exploded. So, yeah, things like that happen. That's a funny one.